good? So, hello everyone. Hi. Please take a seat. Um, my name is Marco. I'm a PhD student from the robotics lab in the University of Extremadura in Spain. And I'll be talking about the LearnBot, which is uh, an open source robot uh, meant for education. This guy right here. Um, I'll basically talk about the, the purpose of, of building a robot like this. Um, what's the design? What's the software that runs in it? And what's the software that we run out of it in our computer uh, to use the, the robot? Um, so why, why would we build a, a small robot uh, for learning? Uh, we wanted to build an open uh, robotics platform uh, that can be used by students. Uh, the purpose of this is to help them reinforce concepts, uh, learn how to program, and even uh, have fun and learn making new stuff. For this, uh, there was a, a few challenges that uh, we had to face. Basically, it had to be easy to, to create and, and use, because we want, we want uh, people to be able to create their own, their own robot. And, um, of course, there, there has to be easy access to parts. And, they, and, and actually, they, they have to be kind of cheap. We didn't, we didn't want it, because ro robotics, everything that you get into robotics gets quite expensive. So we, we looked for specific parts that are cheap and accessible to everybody. Um, I'll, get, I'll get into the details on, on, on the parts that makes this uh, robot work. First, uh, the, the brain of, the, of these robots is um, we use these Odroids, uh, which are basically small computers. It's like a Raspberry Pi, a Korean Raspberry Pi, a bit more, uh, more of power than, than a regular Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's got like one point gigahertz ARM uh, processor, uh, one gigabyte of RAM, Ethernet, GPIOs uh, that we use, and, and USBs that we use for for the sensors connections to manage the sensors. So basically what we do here is we install the, an operating system, we, we use Debian, and then we install a robotics framework. So with, this is like the main uh, core that will handle the, the robot. Then on, on the bottom of the robot, uh, if you look at it, uh, there you go. There's the differential base. Uh, where we have, uh, for those of you that are not uh, familiar with robotics, it's, uh, it's a base in which you have two wheels. And then if you want to go forward, just uh, move in a positive, the, the two wheels at the same time. If you want to go backwards, negative. If you want to turn, you move one positive, one negative. It's like one forward, one backward, and the other way, if you want to turn the other way. And the parts on, on this uh, differential base are just, we, we Bought one of those do-it-yourself motor wheel sets that you can find easily on um, uh, AliExpress or Deal Extreme, one of those Chinese websites. Uh, we use the balloon driver to connect that to the. It's meant for Raspberry Pi, but it works perfectly with the Android. It's meant for uh, connecting the um, the motors to the to the Android. And then we have these ball casters, which are like uh, free wheels that helps uh, stabilize, stabilize the, the base and uh, help it, uh, it allows it to move uh, left and right. Uh, for the sensors, uh, we have a camera, small camera. Uh, we looked into the cameras and we found out that just buying a regular webcam was the cheapest way to get one. So we bought one, a webcam, USB webcam that you can find in any Chinese website and uh, for a very low price. We got the plastic out and then mounted on the on the robot. Then we had some ultrasonic sensors that are actually very cheap. You can find them. Uh, you have them here. You can have a look at them later if you want. Uh, I brought the parts so you can you can have a look. Uh, and then we also have the prime sense sensors. It's kind of like it's, it's a Kinect, but very small one. Uh, we use that in robotics. Uh, it's not on this version of the robot. But there's another version that, that we did with, uh, with this sensor. And we have the components perfect, uh, perfectly running on, on the Android, so you can use it. Uh, it's meant for, uh, you can get image, but you can also get depth. 
like the it's 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 the same device as as the Kinect, but it's a smaller one. Uh, that increases a lot the price because those guys are like uh, 200 or something like that. So the basic version just comes with a with a camera, of course. Uh, here you have like the three versions that uh, uh, we did. Uh, this is the first version that we did with the with the prime sense here, and um, second version, messy wiring. Uh, it was very messy and very hard to debug the the, the whole wiring. Uh, it all kept. Um, Getting disconnected, stuff not working. So we built this, uh, these PCBs uh, that uh, help a lot and keep it clean. So we just place it inside and then just uh, do the soldering on that. And then it, it gets like that clean uh, aspect. The outside, the outside is uh, fully printed, 3D printed. We have the models. I uh, think we have them on the website, but if not, just drop me an email. I'll send you the models if you want. Although we encourage everybody that has some uh, designing skills, which we don't have much actually in the lab, to improve the design with uh, new, new cases if you want. And then this is all just powered by one of these regular um, batteries, cell phone batteries uh, connected to the Android. So it's all pretty simple. And this is how it's all connected. Uh, you get the wheels. Here on the base, connected to the driver, connected to the uh, main uh, Odroid, powered by the uh, power bank, and these sensors are connected to the GPO camera, to the USB. That's basically on the hardware side. On the software, running inside, it's Robocom. That's our uh, robotics framework. Uh, we use it in all these robots. Uh, there's uh, tons of robots, that's even more that are not here, but uh, all these robots, they run Robocom, and they, they reuse the components that we, uh, we use in each of them. So if this guy has a differential base, we'll run the same uh, component that this guy, and uh, maybe this guy does also have a differential base, uh, or this guy, right? So we, we, we can reuse the code. So what's actually Robocomp? Um, it's a robotics framework. It's comp it uses component-oriented programming. That's the main, the main kind of programming we use in, in robotics. So how that works is that we will, we will run um, components for each of the, of the uh, specific needs that the, the robot has. So let's say that we have a, a camera and we want to get the image from the camera, right? and then we do some processing on it. So we'll have a component that is grabbing the image from the camera, and then we have another component that's doing the, the processing. So if we look, at, I'll just draw something here. So let, this will be the camera component, right? And then they will have the, the processing, processing image, the image. And um, this will access the hardware the, the actual camera. Um, and then this, this component will talk to, the, to this other component through an interface, and then it will, it will ask through an RPC for the image. And then this guy will send the image to the, to the image processing component, and then it will do the processing. Why we do this? So we can, we can reuse this component for every single uh, robot that, that has a camera. And then we can also reuse this processing image uh, component in, in every uh, uh, robot that we need to process uh, image. On top of that, we can run this camera on this guy, and the heavy load, we can run it on our computer, which has more power than one of these guys. So that's why we use this uh, component-oriented programming. Uh, for the communications, the ICE middleware is used uh, within the, the robotic framework. We have domain-specific language-based tools to manage these components. So you can generate the generic parts. So you only have to uh, uh, actually write down the specific part of, the, of your component. Uh, we also have some other tools for robotics, like simulations, uh, testing of some components, like checking if the camera's working, stuff like that. I record, recording and, and replaying behavior, that's, that's also very important to record the component's uh, behavior for future testing. 
This is, a, this is uh, actually the work that I was recently doing with the robot. I was trying to get this, this Pringle uh, bottle from the table, and this, this is like how it looks with a network of components running. So all those components are needed, so I can ask the robot to get me the, the, the bottle from the table. So it gets pretty complex, but it's kind of simple here, as you will see. This is actually the um, layout of the framework. Um, we have components, we have the interfaces that uh, uh, will help us connect the components. We have a few files for the, um, for the, the models, uh, deep, deep learning models, we have some other images, uh, we offer 3D models for the simulations. We have classes and libraries, which is uh, reusable code that you can, you can use with the components for maths and some other stuff. Uh, the tools that uh, will help us uh, develop and test, especially test, there's a lot of testing in robotics. Uh, documentation, um, so there's Debian packaging also to, to help us uh, install uh, this framework, and um, the CMake for compiling. So this is how it looks uh, on, on this guy. Uh, so this is the, the what is running in, inside the, the, the learn bot. We have a component for the camera, we have a component for the, for the base, differential base to move it around, and then we have uh, ultrasonic sensors, another component. And then there's a library outside, because it's, we, we, we tried to make it easier to use, so it's just, uh, then in the end you will only write a Python code. So you just run a, run, run a script, import the library, and then everything is taken care of by Robocom. So this, this uh, library will take care of the communications with the different components that build the, the that are running in, inside the learn bot. Uh, of course, this, this runs inside the learn bot, and then you run the script and the, and the library on your own computer. How, in how they communicate is by Wi-Fi. When you turn it on, a Wi-Fi will, uh, will uh, appear. You just connect to the Wi-Fi and communication so on. Um, okay, so I'm gonna try to explain how, how to use this, this library a bit. Um, we need to have uh, Python on the computer. We need to have uh, Robocom installed, mainly because we need the interfaces with ICE. We also need ICE that installed. Uh, we can run it on regular uh, Linux computers. Uh, we use Debian-based computers, basically, but you can actually, there's people running it on some other uh, different uh, distributions. Uh, and we need the, the client library, which we'll use to interact with the components that are running inside of the, of the robot. I'm going to explain um, this. Uh, this is not the whole code. It's just a bit of it, but you can get an idea of how uh, we build this uh, follow the line, typical follow the line uh, application. It's basically you, well, you import the library, which is not here, but you, you import the library in Python, then you, you basically inherit from the, from the library, and you define this, this function, and then you start in, in a loop, you start getting the, the frame. So this is how you, you basically get the frame. You, you do this, and then you already have the image here. Uh, then we use some OpenCV to convert the, the image to... OpenCV is, a, is an image um, uh, processing library, for those who don't know. It's widely used in robotics. And um, we use it to convert the, the, the image to, to binary, so it's only black, black and white. And uh, once we have the black and white image, uh, we, we we divide it into three rectangles in the bottom part, three rectangles, and then we basically sum up the, the black pixels on each of the rectangles. So once we have that, um, we will just uh, follow uh, whoever has more black on it. So if it's on the, the first one, we'll go left. If it's on the center, we'll go straight. On the right, well, we will just turn right. Uh, here's the CV code or part of the CV code to, 
to get the rectangles and then sum up the whole the whole black on the on those bottom rectangles. We also get the sonars just in case. There's um, that's how you get the sonar. Also, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we check if there's a there's a distance to one of them, so it, it won't smash into a wall, and then just stop it when when the distance is under a certain threshold. This is how you move the robot, okay? It's actually stopping the robot because this, this is the, um, the speed uh, and rotational. Uh, so this is how much uh, you want to rotate and then, then how the speed on, on going straight. Um, yeah, so this, is, this will stop the, the robot. And this is how you, how you move it. Once we, we had the, the numbers from the, from the previous uh, sum up, if the more black area is the first one, just this is doing a turn, and this is going straight, and this is going, this is doing another turn. So that's basically the code. I'm gonna try to uh, show a bit. I hope it works because it was, I think it's good enough. So I'll try to show, yeah. I'm connecting to the Wi-Fi that uh, the LearnBot brings up. Hope it works. Maybe still put in. So we built this smart device that allows the robot to look down because we have no motor on the camera, so it's only looking straight. So we use this for the follow the line uh, demo. Uh -huh. Didn't connect to the learn board. Let me try again. All right, it connected. Go to the code. Oh, Troy. I'm actually getting into the... Um, we manually run right now the components inside, so there's a script for that. But um, we plan to do it in the future automatically. It's still in a very early stage. So... We're actually, there you go. Mm -hmm. And now, where is this? Yeah, so it's doing the following the line thing. As you can see, here's the binary image and the black. There's a bit of shadow. That gets a lot of black. It sometimes gets uh, confused by that. But yeah, it, it's... Um, you can see the image up there and the uh, squares that we, we built on the, on the bottom. And um, I will also... I don't know if you can see the... No, you cannot see them. But yeah, I can try, actually. I can actually show you the, the, we have a panel to control the, um, the devices. Mm. Mm -hmm. Let's play what? We build a component that um, allows you to control the different parts. Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah, so this is a basic panel. Then you can see the, the sonars are not working properly. They, they, well, yeah, there you go. Sometimes they have a, 
bit of like this is the ultrasound sensor. This is the camera. Like if I remove this, you can see. And then you can move it with uh, this thing. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's it. That's how, how many, it. Sorry, how many megapixels is that? Um, I actually don't know. It's a, just, a, just a cheap camera, a webcam. Yeah, from how much it does the whole thing cost? The whole thing? It's quite cheap, actually. This is um, the most expensive thing will be this. It'll be like, uh, I think it's like 50 USD, something like that. Uh, maybe this thing, it's uh, also the most expensive thing. This is a few dollars, also a few dollars. The printing case, I don't know how much the, the, the stuff uh, that you need to print is. Uh, but it, yeah, it's actually pretty cheap to build. And um, yeah, I'll go back to the, oh, it's here. And finally, uh, we have still a lot of stuff to do. Uh, we wanted, we we started doing uh, some Scratch to Python conversion, so we can use Scratch on this thing for the for the kids. We tested already with uh, some uh, young people, but they were like almost uh, university students. But we want to build uh, some easier uh, interfaces. Uh, we want to add more sensor support. Uh, maybe integrate the print sense in this version, like maybe just having another top case that you can just easily change or something. Um, uh, so that's that's where the new, more uh, efficient external design comes to plug and play the different sensors and then also build new applications, cool stuff. That, that you can do a lot of stuff with the camera, just face recognition and, and it's very easy. Uh, OpenCV makes it easy. Um, so, uh, we're on Google Summer of Code, uh, actually with a Robocon project, and this, uh, this other project, which is uh, actually a child, what was one of the libraries that we had in Robocon, but it's now its own project. It's a, it's a um, computer vision library, and we have a lot of ideas. Uh, if you guys want to uh, participate in Google Summer of Code, please go uh, to the website uh, or drop me an email and apply. Uh, it is cool. You can, you can actually, there, there's an idea for, for the LearnBot. So you can actually build your own robot, uh, have fun with it, and then uh, even get a few thousand dollars, which is not bad. Uh, so yeah, please uh, have a look at the websites. We have the ideas there. If you have any other ideas, just feel free to drop me an email. Um, thank you very much. Any questions? You have all the all the information is it's here. Uh, you can uh, download the code. Examples are there. Um, we don't we, we we do sell it. You can you can drop me an email if you want. But uh, it was meant so you can you can do it by yourself. It's a it's a very early stage uh, version. Uh, the code that's why we have um, still have the Google Summer of Code uh, for developing. Uh, we want. Uh, to improve, especially stability on the on the code, for for future versions, so so we can you you, you can sell it properly, right? Besides moving, what what other functions can you build like a vacuum or whichever? Well, you can you you could do that, but the thing is that the more the more stuff you want to add to it, it, it increases the price, right? So basically, just with these few sensors, you can do a lot of stuff that will be quite challenging for, for students. So I think it's a pretty decent, that's actually why we removed the prime sense sensor because it was, it was uh, too expensive. It's actually the same, double the price of the whole robot. The sensors are Yeah, yeah, when, once you get into, if you get into motors, like if you, if you want to build an arm for it, then it'll, it'll just, uh, and complexity also gets high, right? If you want to, if you start dealing with a, with a robotic arm or something like that, yeah, it gets pretty, pretty expensive and complicated. Sure, sure. You can you can do whatever you want. Once you get an image, you can just run. You yeah, actually you run it. You can because we use components, right? So you can run it on on your own computer on. A, you know, 
server. You can use GPU processing or whatever you want. Mm. Does it run on Windows? Huh? Does it run on Windows? No, it doesn't. I don't. There's very few robotics running on Windows. Everyone, it's, it's pretty much everything is so free software. Um, it's Android, right? Yeah, yeah, Android. Any any uh, decision what makes you choose Android compared to other Raspberry Pi or other? I didn't make that decision. So, uh, I but I think it's mostly on the on the power because we were looking for something cheap, but we need power, especially for the prime sense, because when you, the, the library for, for, for the, these prime sense devices is open knee, and it consumes a lot of CPU power. So we actually, when we run the prime sense, it will, it will get the whole core uh, for itself. And sometimes it can freeze the robot. So that, I think that's the main, the main uh, decision. Uh, hmm. So what's, what's kind of like future uh, is going to be for the project? Well, we, we, we plan to, to make it more stable. And once we add Scratch, we have some local uh, schools that are interested. It's, uh, it's kind of an open version of the, it'll be like, let's say it's an open version of the Lego Mindstorm. So you, can, you don't have to like, spend so much money on the on the Lego royalties and all that stuff that you're paying. And you can you just even, if you, if you don't want to build it, you can buy it from us, but you can also print it at home or, or build it yourself. So, yeah. So it's actually quite good for, for let's say, developing countries that want to do it. So it's keep the very low uh, price, right? Awesome. How, how, sorry, how big is the community so far? Well, the Robocon community is, uh, it's getting big because we had recently, we're on the third, fourth year of, of Google Summer of Code. So that's helps, helping a, a lot for us. Um, but we currently have uh, quite a few universities in Spain that are stable uh, in, in contributing. And there's a, few, there's a few other students that are around Europe also, also contributing to the project. So it's not very big though, but Getting there, it's enough. The, 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 big, the, the big challenge with robotics is that in the end, you need the robotics hardware. So this is a means to have a robotics hardware that is not extremely expensive. Because once you got to the big robots, uh, like that one on the picture was like, let's say, I don't know, like $3,000 or something like that. So 300,000, sorry, yeah. The, the general was sharing that device yeah. You can probably use, yeah, you can, you can probably use Raspberry Pi, or I think there's a new version of this one, not the C1, you can use some other, as long as you get the, um, the GPIOs, uh, and then you find a driver that it's compatible, and uh, the USBs, you're good to go. I get, and and you, you can power by one of these guys, so. Sure, sure, yeah. All right, thank you.